before the jury came in, this happened. Since Katie McLaughlin testified uh, on Thursday and Friday, we received a, a deluge of photographs that put her with Caitlin Albert on many different occasions after they graduated high school. We received uh, information from their high school yearbook that they were more than just acquaintances in high school, they were teammates on the track team. And even after I sent that email with the photographs that I attached to it, late last night we received a, a, another photo where Katie McLaughlin and Caitlin Albert are standing next to each other in a photo at a baby shower in June of 2021, about eight months before John O'Keefe's death. Uh, it, it's very clear to us that Katie McLaughlin perjured herself. People know. While there are drawbacks to televising trials, there are benefits, and this is one of them. The first witness was Lieutenant Paul Gallagher with the Canton Police. He said he originally thought the call was Meadows Avenue, but then dispatch told him it was 32 Fairview. He arrived shortly after 7 a.m. He knew immediately there was a need to preserve the scene. There was snow falling all over everything. Officers already at the scene did put up barrier tape, so they did do this fairly quickly. There were three vehicles, oops, there were three vehicles in the driveway of the residence. Gallagher said he was concerned about the snowfall destroying or obscuring evidence. He said this was a unique scene because of the weather. While I was watching this, I did wonder why they didn't simply protect everything and get actual CSIs out there. There was an object where Officer O'Keefe was found. The witness described it as a broken cocktail glass. I note that previous witnesses said they didn't notice any objects on the ground. That they didn't notice doesn't mean it wasn't there. I have some questions though. He said cocktail glass. What does that mean? Was it like a martini glass? What makes it a cocktail glass? Was the glass on the ground and the snow built up around it? Or was it in the snow and not touching the ground? So if it fell on top of the snow and, and got maybe pushed down. Knowing this would help establish time. Were they assuming that Officer O'Keefe had been holding that glass? If he had the glass in his hand, where did it come from? How often do you suppose a bar would allow patrons to leave carrying one of their glasses? The reasonable conclusion would be that he got it from the house. Could there be other explanations? Sure, I suppose. If he got the glass from inside the house, well, then hadn't Karen Reed already left when he went inside? I guess we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Maybe there was some reason he came back out after he went in and got a drink. I don't know. I also want to point out that a glass weighs more than a shard of tail light. A glass would sink deeper into existing snow. They blew away the snow layer by layer until they got to bare ground. What they found, aside from the blood and the broken glass, drinking glass, was nothing. And I think it's important to mention those absences. They did not find the other piece of that glass. And, by the way, could broken glass have caused the injuries to his arm? Maybe. If he was not wearing the zip-up sweater when they occurred, he could have injuries that look like that and have his sweater still be intact. Remember the blood on those wounds had already started to coagulate. Anyway, where's the rest of the glass? They did not find any pieces of tail light. They blew that snow away layer by layer all the way to bare ground. Zero tail light. Zip. Zero. Nada. You see that the visibility is better now? You see that he's not being overly aggressive with that leaf blower. They did not find the shoe, not anywhere at or near that area or around the curb. They did not find his black baseball cap. A black baseball cap 
would have stood out. And not finding any of these things, especially, especially things that at the time they would have expected to be there, like the other pieces of the broken glass, maybe his shoe, any bits of plastic or anything else out of place. So where else did they then search for those things? Well, they didn't. They did not search the house at all. They did not look to see if his shoe, his hat, or pieces of glass were inside the house. They did not look to see if there were signs of a fight or disturbance. They didn't look to see if there were matching glasses in the house. They didn't even ask to see. The witness said he had no probable cause to search the house. Oh, really? Okay. But you don't need probable cause to do a consent search. And this is the home of a police officer. And his fellow officer is dead outside on his front lawn. You'd think he'd want to help. You'd think he'd say, oh, hey, search so you can rule me out. Go ahead. But the lieutenant never even asked. And the blood? Well, they collected it in solo cups, plastic drinking cups they got from a neighbor who, by the way, had been notified that Lieutenant Gallagher was coming to the scene because the neighbor was also a lieutenant. No actual CSIs doing any of this. Lieutenant Gallagher entered the house into the kitchen. There were five or six people there. Jen McCabe was there and he knew her. He also knew Brian Albert. Brian Higgins, former ETF, was not there originally, but also eventually attended there. Gallagher said crime lab members examined Reed's vehicles after it was in the Sally Port in police custody. The prosecution didn't really bring out how or why they seized the vehicle. If you go only based on what was found at the scene, you'd have to wonder about probable cause. Obviously, they had enough to tell a judge to be able to take the vehicle, but the whole chain of custody was missing from the testimony, but it will likely come up later from whoever actually seized the vehicle. Everybody in the police department has access to the sally port through the pedestrian door. The area is under surveillance, but the lieutenant only viewed portions of that video. Police were having trouble removing the housing of the taillight, so they called in a member of the department who has the tools to do that. On February 4th, the lieutenant got a call from the chief who said he was driving around the area of the scene. There was an objection and that testimony was stopped. The lieutenant was never interviewed by Trooper Proctor. Also, the lieutenant did not write any report or even take any notes. What? This is bizarre. Why? Why? Somebody died and you're not even taking notes? How does an experienced officer not take notes? You take notes if somebody gets the hiccups for Pete's sake. And you know, there's this detail called court and those pesky lawyers on both sides are forever asking for notes and reports. Not taking notes blows my mind. They made no diagrams, no scene notes, took no measurements. The witness said they don't typically do that. What? So while I'm hearing this, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's some more advanced thing that they do instead. No. Nope. On cross, he reiterated that he had never preserved a crime scene in the snow, despite all his years of experience. The sergeant who took initial statements from witnesses was friends with the Alberts. Defense showed this witness Tully's report, and the witness said it was inaccurate in respect to what the witness had said. He said Tully must have misinterpreted him. The defense asked a lot of questions about the integrity and forensic stability of evidence collection, and the answers would make even a baby CSI faint. It was Sergeant Lank who was doing the interviews at the Fairview home at 9 a.m. I 
just want to point out that by 9 a.m., everybody knew who all the players were. Gallagher spoke to the chief at the time and agreed that Canton police should be recused. He later clarified he meant recused only from investigative interviews. The officers doing those interviews did not record them. Why? Not even just an audio recording. Lank's interview with Jen McCabe was not recorded. Again, what? I could see if this was just a minor incident, but they knew by this point how serious this was. Gallagher said he didn't know if Brian Higgins was there by this time. He could have been there, but he doesn't remember. Then, during the interview with Jen McCabe, the other witnesses were present. This is wild. Unbelievable. While Gallagher was there, he did not look around the house at all. He did not have anyone photograph Reed's vehicle immediately upon its arrival to the Sally Port. And you know, the vehicle should have been photographed at the time they seized it before they even took it anywhere. Gallagher does not recall pieces of taillight breaking during removal of the housing. And the blood that they collected in those solo cups? This witness said that according to Lank's report, he put the solo cups in the evidence locker. Well, it turns out there was no log showing it was actually put into the evidence locker. What the heck? Look at the bottom right of the screen. Near the tire of Reed's vehicle, you'll see a rag on the floor. You can use that for a reference. So the way the evidence has been gathered and handled is horrible. That's been established. It's going to get worse. Look at the photo on your screen. See the rag? See the paper bag there that is supposedly an evidence bag? Those of you who know a little about evidence handling, hang on to your hats and your chairs. You see a bag in the middle of the photograph. Yes. Can you read what's on that bag? Stop and shop. Okay, that does not look like an evidence bag, does it, sir? No. Matter of fact, it looks like a grocery bag. Correct. Is that right? Yes. So, not a forensically stable item, correct? Correct. Certainly not sterile. Correct. Right? Correct. Do you know where that bag came from? I do not. Do I need to comment? I didn't think so. It gets worse. Taking a look at what's been marked as evidence item 39, you recognize what's in the middle of the photograph? Yes. What is that? Those are the plastic cups with the coagulated blood. Do you see on the top of the photograph the same rag? I do. With the same markings? Yes. That appear that those unsealed cups with blood, liquid blood in them are situated right near the right rear quarter panel of the SUV in this photograph? They are to the rear of the vehicle, yes. Come on. If you told me that this happened, I wouldn't believe you. But here it is. Gallagher says they were getting ready to hand over these unsecured, unsealed, not sterile, uh, just open cups containing blood to the to the state police to transfer it to different collection containers why oh why would they be doing it there there is no reasonable answer to that this here is messing with all my sensibilities i'm way behind i haven't even seen the rest of today's testimony I will plot away at it, but I have a feeling I'm going to be running a couple of days behind the live streaming of testimony unless they take a break and I can catch up. That's all I've got for you for the moment. Trust your gut. I'll see you in the comments.